Let's now look at the Hamiltonian for the helium atom and see why it is that we can only solve the Schrodinger equation exactly for the hydrogen atom. So we've got our model system here. It's a nucleus with two protons in it, so it's got a charge of plus 2e, and it's got a mass of four atomic units if we're talking about helium-4, the mass of two protons and two neutrons. Those are approximately equal, both about 1,800 times or so larger than the mass of a single electron. And it's got two electrons. It's a distance r1 away from the first electron, so vector of vector position of r1 minus rn, the position of the nucleus. In general, the nucleus doesn't have to be at the origin. And it's some distance r2 away from the second electron, described here. And the two electrons are some distance away from themselves as well. So we need to do two things in order to get a Hamiltonian. We need to define the kinetic energy operator and the potential energy operator. So first let's look at our kinetic energy. So our nucleus is going to have some kinetic energy. That will be minus h bar squared over 2. I've defined its mass as big M. And then del squared N where I have this notation that del squared for the ith particle is the second derivative with respect to each Cartesian coordinate for that ith particle. Um, all three Cartesian dimensions there, second derivative, that's the Laplacian operator just for that particle. Then we have kinetic energy for each of the electrons. Minus h bar squared over two mass of the electron, del squared of electron one and minus h bar squared over two times mass of the electron, both of them weighing the same, times the Laplacian for electron two. Then all of that will multiply times our wave function, act on it, of, which is a function of the position vector of the nucleus, our big R, or Rn, let me keep my notation consistent. And then the positions of each of the electrons, R1 and R2. Plus, continuing on to the next line, uh, those are all our kinetic energies. Uh, each particle has kinetic energy. Then we need to define the potential energy. And in all chemical systems, uh, in just typical ground states like this, our, kinetic en our potential energy is just coulombic attraction and repulsion between all of these charged particles. So there's a pairwise interaction between every every particle here. So first we have minus 2e squared because the charge of the helium nucleus is plus 2. Charge of the electron is minus 1. Plus 2 times minus 1 gives us minus 2 e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r1. That's the attraction between the nucleus and electron 1. Then we have again minus 2e squared 4 pi epsilon naught r2, the attraction between the nucleus and electron 2. Then our final term is the repulsion between these two electrons, which is plus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r12. And then that's our v operator that will again act on the wave function, which is a function of all coordinates, all nine coordinates of the three particles. And then that is going to equal, so this is our h psi on this side, it's going to equal the energy, e psi, time and psi again being a function of the coordinates of all three particles, so nine total spatial dimensions. Okay, so that's quite a gargantuan mess relative to the fairly straightforward things we've been dealing with. Uh, let's make uh, one assumption here. We can see that the mass of the nucleus is much, much greater than the mass of the electrons. So we can assume that relative to the electrons, it's a pretty good approximation that the kinetic energy of the nucleus, Tn, that operator, is going to be approximately zero. And so we're just going to set that operator equal to zero, and we're not going to worry about the kinetic energy of the nucleus. And then this is going to give us a wave function, which is just a function of the electrons. If you notice from the hydrogen atom, we didn't solve the electron for, we didn't solve explicitly for the wave function in terms of the coordinates of the electron and the uh, and the proton, 
but just in terms of the electron. So in, in electronic structure in general, we're trying to solve for the wave functions of electrons. So if we make that simplification, then our Hamiltonian reduces to minus h bar squared over 2me times the Laplacian of each electron. So these are kinetic energy of electron 1 and 2, same mass, so we can factor that out. Acting on a psi, which is a position function of the position of each electron. Then we have minus each electron's attraction to the nucleus those terms we saw before and that factors out into 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 so these two terms right there again times psi I don't have room but you know what I mean you can assume the same thing is there and then plus the repulsion of the electrons to each other e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r12 psi of r1 r2 equals e psi of r1 r2 okay now normally our strategy in something like this in a multi-dimensional wave function would to be to do some type of separation of variables we would want to separate the wave function into something which only depends on the position of electron 1 and something that only depends on the position of electron 2. We would want to separate the wave function into a product of psi of r1 and psi of r2. And we could do that if we didn't have this term here. You see the kinetic energy here, this term depends on r1, this term depends on r2, and in the electron nuclear attraction, this term depends on r1, this term depends on R2. But in the electron-electron repulsion, there's a problem. And that problem is that this term here depends simultaneously on the position of electron 1 and 2. So this term is called non-separable. So we cannot do separation of variables in the normal way which we would do, like we've done in the case of, say, 3D harmonic oscillator, 3D particle in a box, etc. So this being non-separable means that they, we cannot get an exact solution to the Schrodinger equation uh, with this Hamiltonian. And that means we're going to have to resort to finding approximate methods for finding a solution in general to the Schrodinger equation for atoms and for molecules. For anything more complicated than two particles, like those hydrogen-like nuclei with one electron and, and a nucleus, we have to use these approximate methods. And that's the entire game in electronic structure theory, which is uh, quantum, chem quantum mechanics applied to atoms and molecules. The entire game is finding methods which are accurate enough to reproduce the property in which you are interested. So this uh, this electron-electron repulsion is going to be the bane of our existence and thus we are going to move on from here and study some approximate methods and see how we can use those to gain approximate solutions to the Schrodinger equation for the wave functions and energies of atoms and molecules.